The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the Ju June, the January 17th, the wonderful Wednesday edition of today's Trader Zed Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. Now, the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us. Not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, well, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But even more important than that, and that's this. During this next 53 minutes, I am here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. Dial on in at 877-927-6648. Now, if you've got a question, but you can't call in, you can always send me an email. Please send that to steve at tfnn.com. And inside the subject heading, please put radio show question. Of course, if you're inside our Tiger's Den, well, then any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on wonderful Wednesday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Pretty much a sea of green or red out there. Dow is basically flatter down one point. S&P's off 23. NASDAQ 100, 154. 16 for the Russell. 76 for the semis. Gold's off 16, 17 bucks. Silver's down 27 cents. Lights we crude up 63 pennies. Natural gas down 7 cents. 30 Treasury is off 6 ticks. So we got a lot to look at if we want to. Of course, I want to look at what you want to look at. So where do we want to begin the day out here? I'll tell you where we begin the day. Let's begin the day here. We'll stay on this uh, set of charts out here. And let's go take a look at that New York Stock Exchange, the advanced decline oscillator. I know Peter was probably going to ask me about that inside the Tiger's Den, so I beat him to it. We take a look at it. You're looking at really, so here this chart, the top portion is the New York Stock Exchange. Below that is the advanced decline line. Below that is the advanced decline oscillator. What's the difference? The advanced decline oscillator takes that advanced decline line data, and then it compares the 19 and the 39 period exponential moving average. Now, what's that ratio is creating that advanced decline oscillator. When you get down below minus 150, and right now we're at minus 200.56, it is in oversold territory. So that's the first thing. That doesn't mean that it can't get more oversold. What it does mean, as you can see, just taking a look at the charts out there, bottoms either form one of two ways with regard to this with, with regard to this tool. And when you get to 150, that's when you start looking for those bounces or bottoms. So for example, right back here on the trading day of December 19th. Uh, this oscillator, December 20, uh, 19th, yeah, the oscillator got down to a closing level of minus 194. That resulted in a nice little rally, immediate rally to the upside. That's one way that that's, this this indicator can identify a bottom. The second way is where what we see out here is we see lower lows in price and we see a higher low with regard to the advanced client oscillator. We typically get those types of bottoms when we start getting down into the minus 250 area, but it can happen uh, just as long as you get down to minus 150. But the important point here is for you out there, if what it is listening, whether it's the, uh, uh, the uh, live version or the uh, archived version of the show, is to realize right now, at least as of 1110, I don't know what it's going to look like at 4 p.m., but as 1110, uh, you've got the advanced client oscillator for the New York Stock Exchange is in the oversold, getting towards the extreme oversold condition out there. So that's the first thing to pay attention to. What's the second thing to pay attention to? Well, it's to try to identify bottoming patterns. Now, we don't trade the New York Stock Exchange, so let's go take a look at one of the instruments that we do trade, and that's 
that's the ES Mini out there, probably the most popular, the ES Mini, the NQ, the two most popular equity future contracts to trade out here. So for that, we're going to go take a look at our multi-set of time frame charts out here for the ES Mini. Now, on a daily time frame, longer term picture as we speak right now, suggest a move to 47.16. 47.16 is the bottom of its profile. That's the profiles calculated on this system out here. The black background system, the e-signal system, uh, the bottom of that profile was down at 47.99. So now that we're below that level of support, it brings this level of support into play. If we take a look at that, but we're still in an oversold market condition, so we're looking for bottom signals. Turns out on the five-hour time frame chart, we'll go take a look at other five-hour time frame charts, but at least for the ES Mini, we are going to go ahead and form bar number nine. Now, this bar is going to complete at 2 p.m. out here. As long as uh, price does not close above, and it seems like a pretty likely outcome, that's why I'm going to go ahead and say the five-hour time frame is going to go ahead and confirm a TD9 count bottom by 2 p.m. It'll complete that pattern at the end of today's trading session. But that would be negated, that call would be negated if at 2 p.m. price is trading above 47.99. I don't think that's a likely outcome. It's a possibility. I just don't think that's the likely outcome. So the five-hour time frame chart generating a bottom signal. We don't have anything of the sort on the four-hour time frame. In fact, on the four-hour time frame, I could put in an A to B equals C D to the downside pattern. I could show you what that. I'm going to try to show you what that looks like. There we go. So the A to B point. I'll just simply draw that in here. Looks like that's it. And then. I know I don't want to use that because I've got to use the same candle. So we're going to back this up just a tad. We're going to do that T9 count bottom. Then I'm just going to simply move that over to the high that formed after that. Let's pull this back. Oh, I take that back. My eyes were lying. My lion eyes. So right now, on a forward time frame chart out here, you've got an A to B equals CD pattern to the downside. If we get a bullish reversal candle, and that's also by 2 p.m., then the forward time frame chart would generate a Gartley buy pattern or buy the D point. So you'll want to watch the four-hour time frame again at 2 p.m. If we take a look at the two-hour time frame chart, well, this candle here is going to go ahead and form at 12 noon. So if we do get a bullish reversal candle at 12 noon, the two-hour time frame chart is going to confirm a buy the D point pattern. The key here, as you can see, and let me open up the two-hour time frame chart so you can understand where natural resistance is unfolding here. It is at the oscillator unchanged line. So. What you want to watch there is 47.79. Now, that's what I would say to you right now, but then my eyes see, well, geez, at 47.84 is the top of the current profile for the 120-minute time frame. Now, counter, so let's let's take a look, let's break this apart just a tad. It's a two-hour time frame chart out here, but still you can see that price had closed below the bottom of its bullish structured profile. Now, it only did that for one session out here. So is it a real break to the downside? I don't know until we get to 2, uh, 2 p.m. out here. We take a look at where price is trading. But what price should do is get up towards that oscillator and change line, 47.79. But I would say the real change in trend signal for this time frame would be a close above 47.85. That 47.84.75 to be exact. That is the top of the two-hour profile charts out there. So two-hour Four hour, five hour, very interesting ES mini charts for us to look at, especially as we are in oversold condition markets. On a 60 minute time frame, you have a confirmed Roachman indicator bottom. What price needs to do is close above 47.81 to suggest that price is going to make a move to 47.96. You've got a Roachman indicator bottom on the 30 minute time frame. We've got it on the 15 minute time frame. We've got it on the 10 minute time frame. So the ES mini, regardless of the oversold condition in New York Stock Exchange, it's trying to bottom. That key level, I'd say that key level is going to be that oscillator and change line on the two-hour time frame. And that right now is printed at about 47.79. But since that profile is just above that, let's make it easy. The close about 47.85, we head higher. We'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. 
You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the Opening Call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. Let's get to some of the requests that have come in. The first one from John inside the Tiger's Den. Let's take a look at the Magnificent 7. That's what we've got up on our uh, uh, charts out here. You can also, I've got the ETF for the uh, Qs, the NASDAQ 100. Uh, we can see in the case of the NASDAQ 100, the ETF, the QQQ ETF, price still trading above profile resistance. In fact, this chart would say if it's only a counter trend move to the downside, price should find support between 400.61 and 402.37. The actual low of the day out here for the Qs has been 402.92 out there. If we take a look at Apple. So in the case of Apple, what do we have out here? Let's open up this chart on the daily time frame. Number one, we have a profile that formed about a week ago or so, and price is testing that level. That level is at 181.62. We're trading at 181. We're just trading a few pennies above that area. So if price were to close below that level, what I'd really say out here, John, is that if price closes below the swing point from the trading day of January 5th, that swing point did volume of 62 million shares, and that swing point low is 180.17. If price closes below that, Apple will trigger an A to B equals CD to the downside. I'm not going to draw it in here. I don't need to at this stage here. What we can say out here, John, is that if Apple were to close below that, price would target that breakout level at 170.12. We don't have that condition at the moment. You could at day's end. So that would be an area to most certainly watch. So that's what we see when we take a look at the daily time frame chart for Apple. Uh, when I look at the weekly time frame chart for Apple, and I'm not showing that on my screen here, I'm just going to give you that commentary that suggests that if we do get that close below, that swing point we looked at, that uh, price would go target the 172.09 to 174.33 level for the weekly time frame for Apple. That's its buy zone. With regard to Microsoft, Microsoft is a, actually, I believe it's attempting to form a new profile. Let me get this on my other system out here, too. I thought I saw it. Maybe it was my eyes were... Um, my eyes were lying to me again. Said, no, it is trying to form a new profile. So it's not showing up here. It must be because of a setting. 
So I'm just going to change that setting as long as I am on this chart here. Let's just make sure it's the setting. So that'll help me out, tell me whether it's really trying to form one or not. On bar close, that's the problem. Okay, so the new profile is attempting to form inside of Microsoft. You've got resistance at 391.28, and then you have a buy zone. So support is at 369.25 to 372.01, and then you've got that breakout support at 367. Now, uh, even though, it, and if we were to get a bearish reversal candle today, that would uh, go ahead and generate a uh, Gartley, uh, not a Gartley, a Rhodes Mintum indicator top. But price right now, it's above that green oscillator and change line. It's still bullish out here with regard to Microsoft for its daily time frame. Weekly time frame, it is also bullish out there. With regard to Google, Google has a profile that it uh, just formed out there and price found support. It's a bullish structured profile and it's a bullish structured support zone. I'm going to just do it on my other chart over here, G-O-G. It's between 141.76 and, come on, populate, 141.76 I'm sorry, one, yeah, 141.76 and 142.74 out there. Resistance is what it hit earlier in the day, or that was yesterday, I guess. Uh, and that's up at the uh, 145.68 level. So we don't have a, well, the topping pattern that is present for Google, John, is a wave number seven top. That is letter G. But remember, you get a top. We got that top. All price is supposed to do is go back and test support, and support is held inside of Google. We would change that opinion if we saw a close below 141.75. That would generate a profile change in trend signal. With regard to Amazon out here, Amazon has a wave number seven top. It has a new profile that formed yesterday below price. That's a bullish message out there. The profile level, bottom is 145.36, top is at 149.30. As long as price remains above 149.30, uh, conditions are somewhat neutral. It's got a top, but price is above a key level of resistance out there, and that's what gives it that neutral signal. NVIDIA, no topping signal at all in place out there. We did get a new profile that formed yesterday, the top of which is 553.46. Price tested and rejected that level earlier today. That remains bullish. Tesla. Tesla needs some type of bullish reversal candle to generate. Eh, that's not really an A to B equals CD to the downside out here. Let's see if we can figure out where Tesla's headed to. Looks like Tesla's headed back towards its swing points from back in November. A quick peek over at the week. Yeah, there's nothing on the weekly chart that's going to suggest anything else. So looks to me like Tesla wants to go target this swing point. It's a swing point from the trading day of uh, October 31st. And the range out there, the low is down at the 194.07 level, and the high is at 202.80. So it looks to me like that's it's got a negated TD9 count bottom. Looks like Tesla wants to seek out lower price out there. And to finish it off, we take a look at Facebook or Meta out here. We take a look at uh, Facebook. Meta, what is it doing? It's got a new profile as well that is formed. It's got support at 350.350, and it's got resistance. What looks like at 373.69, let me just confirm that for you, at 373.69, it's actually a bearish structured resistance area. That's between 366.96 and 373.69 out there. So uh, the review of this, other than Tesla, I think everything looked relatively good out here. No major failures of any significance, at least at this stage of the game. So John C. inside the Tiger's Den. If that didn't provide you with the information you were looking for, please let me know, and I'll make sure that I get that for you. Let's go on. Let me close this out here. It's using up a lot of my resources. We'll close this out. And we're going to go take a look at Mara. That's from a guppy inside the Tiger's Den. His question is uh, buy, sell, hold, long-term. He's, he's a long-term trader out there. So we'll pull those charts up momentarily as soon as I get past these currency charts, which we'll probably come back and take a look at out there because U.S. dollar index is on a tear. That's sponsored, of course, by the yen and the uh, euro out there. Now let's go take a look at Mara, though. We take a look at Mara. The real question from McGuppy is where is this headed to? Well, it formed a beautiful TD9 count top. Does it on the bar following bar number nine? That was on December 27th. Price pulls back. Finds support at the bottom of his profile. That was at 2175. Finds resistance at the top of the profile. And finally broke below the bottom of that profile. Gave me a nice change in trend signal back on January the 12th out there. Now... Price is likely going to go target its breakout level. You're in bar number five of a TD9 count. Maybe you get a TD9 count bottom. I don't know. We'll have to come back to it. You're going to come back to it three days from now, three to five days from now, to see what chart pattern we might have. Uh, there's a to B equals CD to the downside pattern as well. So you've got two patterns to watch for McGuppy on the daily time frame that would identify the next bottom. Because you're a long-term trader, you're looking to, to add, that would be a place to consider adding.
value when you get that bottom pattern and signal out there. But 14.48 is game. It's especially game because on the weekly time frame chart, which also had a TD Nike out top, is now trading below that green oscillator and change line. That suggests that a further retracement is likely. Well, that further retracement really takes us back to the daily time frame chart in 14.48. Now, what happens if price close below 14.48? And McGuppy was also asking, where would you sell this? You know, you're a long-term trader out there. I would have been paying attention most certainly to the fact that we had a daily TD9 count and a weekly TD9 count out there. And then at that stage, you had to identify support levels and make the assessment whether you wanted to take that kind of heat out there. You might have made that kind of decision, for example, on the weekly time frame chart. And now that price is down at that heat level. Now what do you do? Well, you, you know, I, again, I don't know your, your trading style completely. On the monthly time frame, though, the real bummer here, that I mean it's a real bummer, as the daily and the weekly charts, McGuppy, were making those TD9 count tops, you and I would have said, just looking at the monthly time frame chart, is that a counter trend rally would have ended at 31.35. That's because that was a bullish structured profile that price had closed below for way more than two consecutive sessions out there. The actual high last month, 31.30. Yeah, this is headed lower, that's for sure, McGuffey, out there. Watch the daily chart, and then you know, get back to me. Let's go ahead and monitor that in uh, three to four days from now. Steve Rhodes with TFN. Be right back. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African RAND, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV.
Welcome back, folks. We'll take a look at the charts here for the SMHs, uh, the uh, semiconductor EA, semiconductor ETF out here. And uh, we can see that it looks like today is going to go ahead and confirm a wave number seven top. That's letter G. You've also got a uh, Rhodes Mintum indicator signal that requires a bearish reversal candle at day's end to confirm that top. Do you, need to, do you need two topping patterns? No, you don't. Now, at the moment, you have price trading below its green oscillator and change line, Dunk. And uh, that's at 175.03. If price remains below that, it adds to the idea of a further retracement possibility. Now, that further retracement possibility could take you down to the top of the profile, 169.08, could be the center of the profile. Now, it was a bearish structured profile. If price gets down there, that's where a counter trend rally would end if it's only a counter trend move. Again, that number on the ETF, the SMH, would be 167.80. If we look at the weekly time frame chart, the weekly time frame chart has a TD9 count pattern. It is still in effect. It's got a Rhodes Mintum indicator pattern. It's still in effect. The only thing that gets that out of effect and negates it is a close above the high. Now, the high out there is priced right now at 176.75. So the SMHs won't take off to the upside until we see price close above that. The monthly chart says that is a likely outcome. That price wants to do that. Why does price want to do it? It's above all resistance levels out there, and it doesn't have a topping pattern. Now, a bearish reversal candle would confirm a Rhodes Mintum indicator top, but uh, we're early in the month. We're in the mid-month out here. We don't see that signal as of yet out there. So the monthly chart is saying the SMHs want higher price. The SMHs have a swing point that formed in November of 2021, 85 million shares there. Uh, last month, price closed above it with 131 million shares. So on a monthly basis, if we take a look at the SMHs, it's a gigantic A to B equals CD to the upside. You know, the conservative A to B equals CD would start at March of 2020. And uh, so that would say, so that's what the longer term chart for the SMHs. The daily chart, the weekly charts are the one that you want to kind of keep an eye on right now. I would say, based upon today's price in action, based upon that wave number seven, uh, signal out there. Odds favor, not a move to the 169.08, but 171 and change out there. That happens to be the weekly oscillator and change line. So that's what I see, Dunk, when I take a look at the SMH. And I hope that that helped you all, provided you with the information you were looking for. If not, let me know, and we'll get that for you. Fletch wants to go take a look at Disney. We take a look at Disney. Let's go see how that is trading. Right now, uh, you've got the uh, trade down at about 91.59. So we look at the charts for Disney. It had a TD9 count top, which turned into an A to B equals CD to the downside. Did it actually hit that price projection? So let's go measure the A to B level. Now this is going to be pretty close. We're just simply going to move that line over to the C point. And the answer is no, it really didn't get down to that level out there. So we can't say, hey, a bullish reversal candle would confirm a buy the D point pattern. What we can say is that yesterday the signal was that we had a change in trend. Profile change in trend. The problem is we haven't had two consecutive days above that level. Maybe you get that at day's end. What's that level? 9208. If you don't, then yesterday's move was a false breakout to the uh, upside. But right now, price is holding support, which is that green oscillator and change line out there. So I'm kind of a little bit ambivalent. If I sounded like I was, that's because that's really I'm just narrating the chart and what it's communicating to us at this stage here. So I'm uncertain with regard to the daily time frame yet as to what its real signal is. Now, if it closes below this oscillator and change line, then it wants to make a beeline back to support. 8903 to 8971 and below that 8741 would be the number on a weekly time frame you've got a beautiful roads momentum indicator bottom uh, you have price just simply pulling back at this stage here support is between 8787 8857 on a monthly time frame for Disney, all I have is a consolidation with inside his profile levels, Fletch. That's between 81.25 and 93.84 out there. So to summarize it, consolidation on the monthly. Really, you're consolidating on the weekly as well. And on the daily, Steamy just doesn't have a really great feel at this stage of the game. But what I can share with you is that if you do get a close blow, the screen oscillator and change line, 91.42 today, odds would favor 89.03 to 89.71 as being the last likely price target. So, Fletch, I hope that helps you out, and thank you so much for the request. Um, let's see. I don't see any other requests inside the Tiger's Den here, so I think I've gotten to everything there. If I have overlooked your request and you're inside the Tiger's Den, would you be kind enough to retype that in as my eyes just simply simply overlook that? We'll look at the emails, and we don't have anything here by email either. 
So what do we want to do? I'll tell you what we're going to go do. We're going to go first check in on the ES Mini, take a look at the intraday charts that we were looking at. And on the intraday charts, do we have any other signals? So I, I would say the signal is, as I look at these charts here, it's uh, gunning for that 120-minute oscillator and chain sign. Currently printed out right now at 47.79. Now, we talked about that oversold condition out here. I'm going to go back to the black background charts. If you were just turning in now, I'll go back to that chart real, real quickly for you. And the oversold condition, you can, to, I, I think one of the best indicators to identify oversold and overbought conditions is, in fact, the New York Stock Exchange, its advanced decline oscillator. It gives you a real good feel for the general markets. And the cool thing there is, you can find this. You can find this tool. Um, I would think you can find this tool in in some charting packages out there. Certainly, it, it exists inside of the E Signal charting application. But that advanced client oscillator, that is panel number three that we're looking at, dead center. It's below minus 150. All you need to know is on that calculation, above 150. If you get above plus 150, that typically indicates one, we get the overbought status, but two, we're likely to see higher prices in the future. When you get to the oversold status, that would be minus below minus 150. Tells you to expect and anticipate some kind of a bounce. So we're seeing that trying to unfold as we took a look at the ES Mini. The other thing, and you and I have talked about this, and we're going to talk about it a lot this year, is take a look at the, that was the ES Mini we're looking at. If we take a look at the S&P 500, some people, if you're just sitting here in your chair in the U.S., you're not paying attention to what's going on around the globe, would think that there's just all kinds of sellers today. The reality is, we take a look at the S&P 500 priced in yen over in Japan. They're not sellers. They're a new all-time high. They're not even close to sellers out there. Well, maybe they're close. But they're not sellers as we speak today. If we take a look at the uh, uh, S&P and Great British Pounds formed a new all-time high yesterday. New all-time high in euros yesterday. If we take a look at the Swedish Krona, it's approaching a it's it's a old all-time high that formed back in September of 2023 out there. Australian dollars got the Australian Open. I was up watching that a good part of the night. It struggled sleeping. Um, and good matches. Uh, the uh, very good matches last night. But I didn't see the Coco Golf. I didn't. Did she win that? Anybody know? Did Coco win that match? She she was up 4-1, and I went to sleep for a while. And, 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 and anyway, anyways, I don't know. It doesn't matter. What I can share with you is the S&P 500 is at a new all-time high um, in Aussie dollars. The point, really, of this chart is there are buyers and there are sellers. If price was just moving down in all of these currencies, then we could say, okay, there's sellers out there. That's not what we've got. And what that is continues to signal to you and I is that retracement levels should be kind of mild out there. The one chart you and I haven't talked about for the last two sessions out there has been the seasonal patterns out there. Why? Well, quite frankly, folks, this is way more important than those seasonal patterns are. This will take over for those seasonal patterns. So, yeah, we saw some buying inside the ES Mini and the S&P 500. We've seen it. But they're not sellers if you're in Australia. They're not sellers in Japan. They're not sellers in Europe, whether you're just in all of Europe or whether you're in the UK out there. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com tfnn educating investors 
Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at tfnn.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction Leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, now, folks. Let's take a look at the Nike here. This is for John C. inside the Tiger's Den. Nike formed a beautiful TD nine count top. Does it back here in the trading session of December nineteenth? Has been trading lower ever since. Very first thing that it did was it uh, busted through the bottom of its profile by that gigantic gap to the downside. That was back on December the twenty second. So now what do we have in place out here? So I've drawn in what looks like an A to B equals C to the downside. Just anticipating somebody might ask me about that. I would say that's not the pattern that's in play here. And the reason why Stevie would say that is this retracement, this B to C retracement is only a 21% retracement. You got to get it up towards that 0 0.382 retracement, in, in my opinion, in order to form an A to B equals CD pattern to the downside. Another easy reason to go ahead and be able to negate that pattern out there is it's triggered a road's momentum indicator signal. So we already have a potential bottom pattern. And what Nike needs to do now then, John, is to generate a bullish reversal candle. If it does that, the Nike should bounce up towards its oscillator and change line, currently printed 104.92. Weekly time frame chart. Forms a TD9 count top as well, matching the daily time frame chart. Price, a couple of weeks ago, closed below the bottom of its weekly profile, bounced right above it last week. So, you know, it's giving us a false breakdown signal, and now it's back below it again. This suggests that Nike wants to go target 95.92. So what you're watching for here, it doesn't have to get down there, but that becomes the price target level unless you see a bullish reversal candle on the daily time frame. On a monthly time frame for Nike, Nike has a road's momentum indicator top that leads to a TD9 count bottom that leads to a rally with inside its profile level. Right now, we just have a consolidation with inside the profile. John, what I would say here is because price is below its red oscillator and change line, odds favor a move all the way back to the bottom of that profile, although this is the buy zone. The buy zone for Nike is between 96.66 and 104.67. So how do you use that piece of information, Steve-O? I would say if on the daily time frame, John, you got the bullish reversal candle to confirm the Rhodes Momentum Indicator bottom, because on the monthly time frame we're inside the buy zone, that would be your trigger for at least a at least a short-term trade out there. So that's what I see when I take a look at the Nike charts. The 30-minute did form a TD Nike out bottom. Let me pull that chart over for you. So we take a look at the 30-minute uh, time frame chart for Nike. You'll see a TD9 count bottom that formed at 10.30 this morning. 
Now, what price should do here is it should, just like on the date, it wouldn't matter what time frame, I would be telling you the same thing. I know that's why you're probably getting bored of me. You know, I got to come up with new ways to say the same thing out there. But what price should do here is it should bounce up to that oscillator and change line. That becomes your line of demarcation, 100.98 or thereabouts. That's going to change as price moves a little bit higher. But if price can close above that, that would then suggest a further rally. That further rally would say you could get up to 101.49 to 101.61. 101.61 being the place where you put the emphasis. Why? Because that's a bullish structured profile. And if price closes above that, for that time frame, that would tell you this is more than a counter trend move for that time frame. So that's what I see when I take a look at charts for Nike. I hope that that made sense to you. And uh, um, thanks so much for the request out there. Uh, Fletch wants to take a look at DocuSign. So let's go take a look at DocuSign out here. Pull those charts up and uh, DocuSign. What do we have? We have price trading. Where is the top of its profile? 58, 58, 56.32. Okay, so we're way above that. All right, so we take a look at DocuSign. DocuSign two days ago was trading into a recent swing point. The recent swing point, this is from the trading day of December 15th, volume of 30, basically 31 million shares, and it was moving into it with 12 million shares. Wow, that's light volume last week. So now you have DocuSign pulling back and testing a key level of support, Fletch. That's that green oscillator and change line. So what you want to do is you, you want to watch the uh, 61, 67 level out there. Um, if, uh, give me a second here, sorry about this. Uh, Oh, wow. Okay. Uh, so watch 61.67. If price closed below 61.67, it will suggest to you that it has lost momentum. And if it's lost momentum, the question would be, well, where is price going to head to? We'd look for that next level of support, and that would be between 54.93 and 56.32. On the weekly time frame chart, you do not have a topping pattern out here. You just have price, well, price is trained above profile and above its green oscillator and change line. So its charts are bullish out there. It's going to wait for the daily time frame to make its decision. The monthly time frame charts, interestingly enough, I believe that price is trading above resistance, 59. It most certainly is. So DocuSign on the monthly trading above resistance, on the weekly trading above resistance, on the daily trading above resistance. But still, what's going on on a short-term time frame chart? Great question. Let's go find out, Fletch. So if we look at this 30-minute time frame, we can see a TD9 count top, took price back to its breakout level of support, did close below for two consecutive bars, but it's back inside it right now. Here's what I would say. DocuSign will rally if it can close above 62.89 out there. That's the level that I'd be watching on the short term. I do hope that that helped you out. And as always, thanks so much for your request out there. We've got a caller on the line. It is Mike in Ormond Beach, Florida. Mike, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you today? A little bit chilly here in the Daytona Beach area today, but um, that's good. I, I enjoy a little cold snap once in a while. Steve, I'm calling about Exxon, yes. and uh, we're, get, we're getting down to an area that was like previous resistance on a weekly chart between uh, like 96 and 97. What, do you, what are your thoughts? Do you think this could be an area where it could support so here's what I would here's what I'd look at. Uh, I would first uh, take a look at the daily time frame chart. The daily time frame right. chart at this moment in time has triggered a road momentum indicator signal. So that mm -hmm. would then suggest you'd be looking for a bullish reversal candle. And if you got that, that would then identify a a bottom candidate out there. So that's the first that's the first pattern on the uh, daily time frame. The second pattern that's still out here. As you can see, uh, Mike, is an A to B equals CD to the downside. I'll just simply draw in the A to B point for folks. Then we'll just simply move that over to the C point out there. And we'll see that this has already completed at least the one to one. And it has generated a couple by the D point patterns out there. So in effect, you would have, so it's still the A to B equals CD pattern is in effect. By the way, it, was neg it will be negated today uh, with a close. That's the by the D point pattern. It'll be negated today with a close below 97.48. Now, I don't know where price is going to close. You're at 97.20 right now. But if it closes back above 97.48, the buy the D point pattern is still in place out there. Interesting, huh? Um, interesting yeah. to Stevia. Interesting to Stevia, at least. Okay, so that's a daily time frame chart. So watch those levels. On the weekly time frame chart, 
price is trading below the bottom of its profile. It's trading below a swing point. Now, I'll have to go back and see if there was enough of a retracement to potentially generate the C point. It looks to me like it was less than a 0.382 retracement out there. But nonetheless, we are trading below the December 15th swing point. Now, there was 149 million shares. Obviously, we have a shortened trading week out here. So far, for the it's going to be hard to really gain or measure. But so far, we're at 27 million. Again, that was going against a swing point of 149. Nonetheless, you're below support. That suggests lower price price. You were saying that this was an area that uh, be before where you had some prior resistance level. So all that I yeah, can share like, with you. Yeah, 96, 97 area. It looked like uh, there were quite a few opens and closes on the weekly chart around there. Got it. Okay, cool. So the cool thing here is that, you know, not exactly your number. By the way, we're going to go to a break here. So I'm going to, I'm going to uh, shut this down just for a moment. We'll come back, Mike, and take a look at it. But just simply because we are trading below profile and between red oscillator and change on the weekly time frame, that's suggesting lower price as well. And that was really your level of support, 99 this time around versus 97. But uh, we come back this break. We'll continue looking at Exxon Mobil. Okay, you're right back. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. DFNN.com. Educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFM. NN.com. Welcome back, folks. We're on the line with Mike and Ormond Beach. Hey, Mike, during the break, I uh, went ahead and I measured that retracement from the uh, low. I looked on the weekly chart, the low of December 15th up to the high mm -hmm. on January 5th. And there was only about a 30% retracement there. So I'm going to go with that we don't really have a weekly A to B equals CD to the downside. 
But what I also okay. have out here is I don't have any kind, you know, I, I where are we headed to next? If that were the question, the only thing I still have is if we yeah. get a close below that low from December 12th and negates that by the D point and you're still waiting for a bullish reversal candle to identify a bottom. On the monthly time frame chart, you could justify this thing pulling all the way back to 84.58. That's really next level of identified support that I have between the daily, weekly, okay. and monthly charts for ExxonMobil. Yeah, that was my, one of my main questions, where you see other areas of support if we break through uh, this area we're in now. Yeah, so, like 84.58 until we get the next bullish reversal candle is what is what I think. Okay? Okay. Hey, always good to hear from you. <clears throat> Happy New Year to you. And we'll look forward thanks to speaking and, with you uh, again. Thanks, thanks for discovering the RMI. <clears throat> oh. Like as, as on this chart with Exxon, that's one of the things I did notice that we were starting to form that on a daily chart. So Perfect. Uh, appreciate everything you teach us. It's, it's, it's great education. Thank you, Steve. You bet. You have a great day. That was Mike in a cool Ormond Beach, Florida. We are cooling off down here in Florida, and uh, it's going to be in the uh, upper 60s. I know, I know, don't complain. All right, so the last question that we've got in here comes from Z inside the Tigers, and he said, uh, SR, a question for you. You may choose not to answer. That's okay if so. Uh, so did the S&P 500 top Friday at 4802, and now in the early stage of a decline out there? So how am I going to answer that? I'm going to come back and I'm going to say, look, at this stage here, We've got change in trend signal inside the ES Mini, and that is trading below the bottom of its profile. So is it going to continue to decline at this stage? Well, we're in overbought conditions, so oversold condition out there. So I've kind of covered that. Let me give you the real answer. I don't think we're going to see anything significant in the decline inside any of the U.S. indices out here. And the reason is, the culprit is, is global capital. Again, New all-time highs. We called. We talked about the S&P 500 inside the Dow today in terms of yen. Inside the Swedish Corona. Inside the Aussie dollar. Yeah, folks. Uh, uh, so, anyways, have a, a wonderful Wednesday. I'll see you on terrific Thursday. Take care.